I want to do just a quick bit on multi-level modeling. I'm not going to go too deep because it's a big topic, but you can dig in further if you're interested. We've talked about different kinds of fixed effects and factors. Multi-level modeling is basically just generalizing from fixed effects. Gelman and Hill have a great book on data analysis using regression and multi-level slash hierarchical models. For instance, you might want to use state data in some equation on cannabis use to understand how state policies impact. If we didn't put in any factor or fixed effect for state, then that would pool everyone together. Everyone would start from the same value. Or you could use a fixed effect for each state. That's the no pooling method. But while there are some states that are really big with lots of data points, there are other states with small numbers of people. So that fixed effect coefficient could be measured with large errors. We could measure any kind of crazy value if there are only a few people there. One outlier could drag the whole estimate around. We might want to give a little more structure to the problem to model that we expect to use the overall pooling estimate for sort of the grand average, but as we get more observations, then we will gradually shift the estimation. And that's just what multi-level modeling is doing. Groups that are really large get nearly the fixed effect estimate, while smaller groups get weighted toward the pooled value of the overall average. Going deeper in the notation, we want to model the usage of person I, state J, where X includes all the other explanatories. With a pooling model, Y, I, J is going to be alpha, that's the ordinary coefficient for everyone, plus beta X, I, J, plus the error. With no pooling model, each state gets its own alpha, each can be different. Y is alpha j plus beta xij plus the error. The multi-level model will split those alpha. There's alpha naught plus alpha j with square back brackets to distinguish. We further model that alpha j in square brackets has a normal distribution with some sigma coefficient of its own, sigma alpha, to describe how much variation it has. If we have only a single factor, then this might be a little extra. But that generalizes to models with lots of different factors, race, ethnicity, education, gender, etc. With more and more intersecting segments, each bucket of you know, that intersection is going to get smaller. That risks having estimators chasing outliers. Therefore, the additional structure can be really helpful. The next step is to include interactions with the slope, just like we did before with factors, now, but with that additional structure imposed about the distribution of those additional factors. The mathematics gets a little more complicated. The estimation machinery gets a little more complicated, but we can model where the slope varies for different groups. To do this in R, instead of LM, we have LMER. There's a little bit of difference about how to specify the model, but it's not that complicated or difficult. You can get more accurate estimations. I won't go into great detail here, but if you want to learn more about this, I'd absolutely recommend it, then you can do some reading.